Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel for, as you probably read in the title, another Q&A video of ours where you pose the questions we try to answer. I will point out, as ever, that we can't get into the details of anybody's case, you know, unless you give them to us in, in one of the comments and give us permission to go over them because we are bound by Germany's, you know, data protection law. But if you want to interact with us directly, please, by all means, join us for the meetings on Patreon on Sundays where we can interact directly. You can ask your questions directly. We can discuss them with you directly. But as for this format, questions are written for us so let's jump in mr justin wonderful hey guys uh we're gonna start this week's episode out from uh, our good friend at uh, shepherd services uh it says the only thing i'm worried about when giving up u.s citizenship is not getting social security benefits i will be 40 years old by the time i could get citizenship elsewhere i'd love to renounce is it worth it is it worth it to renounce U.S. citizenship? But the first part of that question was, do they lose their Social Security right. benefits? Um, we depends on what kind before. of Social Security benefits we're talking about. Right. The benefits that you get because you worked in the USA till a certain age and then retired, you earned that. You don't mm -hmm. lose that. Correct. So, no, you don't lose that. And, it's, and as we've said in other videos, it's absolutely no different than if you had a settlement in a, in a lawsuit against the government or you had a pension from your company or retirement from the military. You don't lose what you've already earned. You would lose whatever supplemental you have where they're helping, you know, food stamps, for instance. If you come over to Germany, why would the government continue to give you food stamps? Just as an example, I'm not saying you're getting them. So generally speaking, what you've earned in the United States, you keep. Yeah. That's simple. The second part of that question was, is it worth it? Yeah, is it worth it to uh, to renounce? Well, uh, I don't know. Let's go back to the first question. Is renouncing necessary? Uh, well, or the first part it, of that. Yeah, it's not. It's not mm -hmm. really necessary. I know you want to do it out of spite, <laughs> you know. But uh, you know, you can always keep that in your back pocket to have just in case. Um, and there's really no need to renounce it. Mm -mm. I don't think so. I mean, except maybe for tax purposes, if that's what you're really worried about. But you don't have to renounce citizenship for that. Uh, yeah, that's. I, I. I don't really know why you'd want to necessarily. I mean, I understand why you might want to, but I don't think it would really benefit you mm -mm. in any way. Mm -mm. Uh, you never have to acknowledge it ever again. You can travel on your new passport. Correct. And never put that blue one away because, honestly, the maroon colored one you'd get here is a lot stronger than that blue one anyway. So uh, you'd be better off just using your new citizenship and keeping that old one just in case. And at the risk of repeating myself from previous videos, Germany and most other EU countries allow for dual citizenship. So once you get your German or Danish or Norwegian or French or or French citizenship, you don't have to renounce your U.S. You, you just don't use it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's that simple. And let me touch on the fact that, that, you know, Justin just brought up the income tax issue. If you're living in Europe and you're earning under a certain amount, and it, that amount changes, you know, as the economy goes up and down. But generally, if you earn under 120,000 euro per year, which is, I think, damn near all of us, you don't have to pay taxes in the United States. You only have to pay taxes locally. Yes, you need to file a tax return in the United States saying that I work in Europe yeah. and I make under a certain amount. And you'll have to prove and That's not a problem. And I've done it every year that I've been here so far. And I've not paid one dime, not one penny in American income tax. Right. So yeah, just, I know that's a side topic. Yeah, you're still going to have to file income taxes mm -hmm. every year as long as you're a citizen. Um, as long as you meet the criteria for filing, mm -hmm. then you still have to file. So. And you can look it up easy enough. It's under the yeah. Foreign Income yeah. Tax Exemption Act or something like yeah. that. It's there. Um, but you really don't have to worry about it. You just have to make mm -hmm. sure you do it. Correct. That's all. So, Good question, Mr. Services. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think I got a text, for, or not a text, but I think I got an email from him this morning. I keep seeing this name. Yeah. He comments a lot. He's, he, okay, okay. He loves the videos. All right. I answered and you this morning. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, this is the next one. It's a good question. It's direct. It's directed directly to you. Yeah. Uh, it's a. It's from Roadrunner. <laughs> meet me. I yeah. used to watch those. Yeah. How did Germany not classify your conviction and escape in Florida as illegal in Germany? How was that not serious oh. enough? Okay. Mm. You're going to love the answer. Mm. Okay. First of all, let's deal with the escape first because that's the easiest yes. and the least controversial. True. And under German law, escape is not a crime. Mm. Under EU law, escape is not a crime. Curveball. They consider it a natural uh, human instinct to want to be free and to seek that that freedom. So mm-mm, it's not a crime at all. Caveat: You cannot, not you, because clearly you're not going to escape because you're free. You're able to visit the internet and send us questions. But if a person were to escape and they injured somebody or damaged property, then it becomes a crime over here. Still a relatively minor crime might even be treated as a misdemeanor so long as there's no serious bodily injury to anybody that got hurt. But generally speaking, eh, not a crime. As for my my uh, sex-related offense conviction, it's another curveball. I can't remember if my partner, my victim, was 15 or 16. I cannot remember, and I don't care enough to go back and look. I was 22 at the time. I remember that. I was a senior in university. And because my victim was older than 14, it's not a crime here in Germany. In some countries here, it's 13. But mm -mm, Germany does not consider anything I did or alleged to have done or been convicted for to be a serious offense. You must keep in mind that in the United States, you who asked the question, you, the viewer, Justin, you, me, we all grew up in a system where we heard propaganda all the time and we had it beat into our heads about how everything related to to nakedness is a crime. Everything related to sex is a crime. It's always dirty. It's always perverse and sinful. And you grow up believing that some of these, what I now believe to be minor crimes, are so just overwhelming, the victim's devastated, and, oh, the world's never going to be the same, you can't ever be trusted again, and, and you know, I'm going to use my favorite word. That's bullshit. Mm. It's flat out. Europe doesn't look, look at it this way. Um, we have a visitor, uh, a mutual friend of ours, who's going to be visiting next week, and one of the pilots, who is a teenager, a pilot at our air club, has asked if he can sit in an interview with her on on camera. So you're going to hear it directly from a young person here in Germany. You're going to hear it out of their mouth, his mouth, exactly what the average German teenager thinks about this nonsense. So, And it is nonsense. And it is. uh, Yeah, but I didn't believe that till I came over here. (laughs) It's only when you get out from under the propaganda and you realize just how out of whack the United States is that I'm going to go on a tangent for a second. One of the things that really, really irritates me is this idea that there is a 100% victim and a 100% perpetrator, that there's never shared culpability, that if you're the older person, no matter what the age, even if you're, if it's two teenagers and you're the older teenager, you are, it was all your fault, 100% your fault. Even if your, your victim presented you with a false ID and lied to you about his or her age, it doesn't matter. Under Florida law, you're still responsible. And I now understand that's just complete nonsense. And I have difficulty believing that some things are now these horrendous crimes and these children are, and when I say children, I'm I'm referring to teenagers, how they're just these uh, horrible victims of these crimes when, when you later find out it was the teenager that did it or started it, but it's the adult that has to take the, the blame or the liability for it. So I now have a different perspective than when I lived in the United States. Forgive me for rambling. No problem. But hopefully that answers your question, Roadrunner. Or over answered it. Yeah. Moving on. The next question is from Brandon's comment. Hello, Mr. Comment. Oh, he has two questions. Oh, that's his. his oh, Brandon's comment is his username. <laughs> that's his handle. Okay. Yeah. Two questions. One, do you still register there? Yes, but not the way you think. Okay, thank you. And two, does your criminal report follow you from America when applying for jobs in Germany? Oh, mm. good questions. Okay. Mm-hmm. The issue about whether you register, whether I register over here, the answer is absolutely yes. 
I am required by German law to register my address anytime I move. That is true for absolutely 100% of everyone who lives in Germany. Everyone. We have to re- – sorry? Everyone. Yeah. yeah, we have to register our addresses with the government so that the government has an official address for you when they need to send your tax return to you or, or they need to send – when they send a traffic ticket to you through the mail. Mm-hmm. Or court summons. Or a court summons. <laughs> So, yeah, everybody, 100% everybody registers their address. However, if you mean, do I have to register because I have previously been convicted of a sex-related offense, the answer is hell to the no. Hell no. No. No, they don't hell do that. Hell no. They don't do that here. No, and, and <laughs> that's not, not only do we not have that kind of silly. thing here, but I would just not do it. Silliness. Silliness. <laughs> the second question was... Help me. Yeah, do you, does your criminal background follow you to uh, jobs the way it does in the U.S.? Good German word for you is jein. Ja und nein. Zusammen. For almost any job the average person is going to get, no, your criminal record is not going to follow you. Right. No. If you are going to get a job where you are a kindergarten teacher or you are teaching after school soccer or something like that. Oh, sorry, foosball. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, they, they do background checks to see if uh, if it – oh, they do a background check to see if you have a criminal conviction. Now, here's the caveat to use that word twice in one video. Generally speaking, Germany only – Germany? Did I really say Close that? Enough. Germany only cares about the last five years. Every time I, – I've had to do three background checks every, you know, for three different promotions I had at work and – in all three, it was only the last five years. The only time I have been asked about my American record is when I applied for a special kind of background check because when you get a motor plane license over here, because the aircraft has an engine and has the potential to be flown into a building, they do extensive background checks covering 10 years. So there's two out of those 10 years that I still have to cover. But Germany only cares about the last, and even in that circumstance, the last 10 years. So if you have no convictions in the last 10 years, it doesn't matter what you happen, what happened 11 years ago or 15 years ago. They don't, they don't care. It doesn't apply. So generally speaking, no, you don't need a background check. Sometimes you do, but even if you do, don't right. sweat it. Yeah, there are certain jobs, high security jobs, things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to work at the airport or something like that. Mm-hmm. They're going to want a a recent background check from mm-hmm. him, but it's a security thing. That's all it is. However, yeah. if you passed the criteria to get your work permit here, mm-hmm. you don't need to worry about a yeah, background probably check. Be okay. You're going to pass. So. Okay, that was a good question, uh, Brandon's and it really comment. was. Thank you. Or, I'm sorry, two questions. Kind of snuck one in on there. Uh, moving on. This next question is from Zane Wetzel. How you doing, Zane? He says, uh, great video, guys. I'm really learning a lot. Awesome. Thank you. One question I haven't been able to find out about yet. Do the Caribbean territories owned by European countries have the same immigration and citizenship benefits as moving to the countries in Europe? For example, Aruba is Dutch, St. Martin is French, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. That's, uh, that is a pretty interesting question. Um, immigration and citizenship benefits. Well... Uh, I would assume if you became a citizen of any of those countries, then you would have direct access to whatever country governs it. I'm assuming the citizenship would be the same. As far as immigration goes, I know some of the countries have their own independent immigration policies that are slightly different from the mainland, but I mean, the European ones would be fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't see any problem going there. You know, you can go visit Aruba if you want. Yeah, my family is talking about a doing a, a family reunion get together next year. Obviously, I'm not returning to the U.S. for that, so we're, mm-hmm. we've talked about doing it in the Caribbean. And I looked at some flights, both from the Netherlands to some islands and from France to some islands, and they were listed as domestic flights. So, I think if you were able to immigrate into one of those islands, mm-hmm. you could catch a domestic flight right to uh, to yeah. the European mainland without a problem. Yeah, the citizenship for the islands might be a little more stringent because islands don't really want a bunch of people coming to just live there. Unless uh, you have a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, you also have to take into consideration like where you're going to work. 
I mean, how are you going to make money? Uh, everything is going to be expensive, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean, unless you're going to open up a resort or you're going to work at one, um, you know, it's, I know the idea of living on a tropical island is, is fascinating. Uh, but the reality is sometimes you can't even get water. You know, I, I was down in the American Virgin Islands and we were talking with a waitress when, you know, at, at a hotel and she said, yeah, everybody wants to come live here, but you don't realize it's like $4 for a bottle of water mm. when you can get one. You know, sometimes there's no fresh water. You know, it rains a lot uh, and it's hot. But I mean, who knows if, if that's if that's your idea of of a good time, then by all means. You can certainly try it, but yeah, every Caribbean country is going to have their own uh, immigration and citizenship policy. It might be slightly different from their European counterparts, you know. Yeah, but if you got onto one island, by coming to the mainland, you're not going to have to present your passport again. They're not going to check to see if you have any special, anything written inside your passport. Yeah. I'm not Hmm. sure what the intent of that question was. I'm I'm assuming like if you want you wanted to become a citizen of like Aruba or something. Um I think it might have different requirements. Similar, but there might be some differences, you know, versus uh the Netherlands, for example. You that's that's something you would have to discuss with an immigration attorney in Aruba. Yeah. Or go to their website and look and see what their citizenship requirements are. You know, I'm assuming you have to live there for several years, but you have to get residency first. And in order to do that, mm-hmm. you know, there's a very good chance you're going to have to supply a background check. Who knows how they look at that? I, I, I don't know. Or how closely. Yeah. Couldn't tell you. No. But it's a good question, Zane. Thank you. You know, all those years I was in prison, I never once read a Zane Gray novel. Zane Gray, I do know that name. Hey, a yeah, bunch of we- I mean, a yeah. bunch of Western novels. They were really, really popular in the Florida system, but not one time did I ever read one. Hmm. Okay, hmm. sorry, hey. Zane. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Last but not least, today we have a uh, big ace. Yo, is he out of Florida? Another Florida yes, resident. Gotta be. Gotta be. <laughs> Mr. Ace says, uh, "So, what would happen if you came back to the USA?" Would you be arrested since you fled? And do you have oh. any desire of coming back to the USA? Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming this was directed at me. Towards you, yes. Okay. Um, do I have any desire to return to the U.S.? Realistically, sure. I mean, I'd love to. I w- would have enjoyed being at my niece's, uh, niece's plural, weddings. I would have enjoyed that. Um, there's going to come a time in the near future when I'm, you know, some of my family are going to be buried. I'd like to be there for that. However, do I intend to return? No. Because, yes, I would be arrested on site. Um, There's a warrant out. You can tell how much I'm hiding from the Florida government when I'm discussing (laughs) this openly on YouTube. There's a warrant out for my arrest because I, number one, failed to inform the government that I had a passport, which seems really stupid considering the government issued that passport to me, Mm -hmm. whatever, and also for failing to register, although... Technically, I didn't have to register because I'd already left the country. I wasn't living there, so I wasn't required to do it. Um, For those offenses, the prosecutor in the state of Florida told the German government that they would seek a minimum 18 years prison for me just for these two ridiculous offenses, administrative offenses. So, no, there's no chance at all I'm going to go back. None at all. That's the short answer. Yeah, that's... That's, Thanks for the question. That's a good though. answer, though, Mr. Mr. Ace or Mr. Big, Big Ace. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this week's episode. Uh, hopefully, you guys are able to learn something, just like Zane. And you know, if you want more answers, feel free to join us on Patreon. Join the community. Help support uh, these videos that you like watching every week. Join our Sunday meetings. You know, you can do that too. Jump on Discord and text your heart away. And we do read the comments. We, we do, do read the comments yeah. in the videos. Don't always get to reply to them, but yeah, we, I sp- we do reply. Spent a to while them. this morning answering. And if you have more questions, feel free to leave them down below, and we'll get to them in a future episode. 
All right. And hopefully some of the things that we've explained today will encourage you to take that leap that you probably need to take. You're clearly thinking about it because you're watching mm -hmm. these videos. So because you're watching these videos, I don't want to disappoint you by not saying it. If you're not happy with your situation, do something about it. There is a growing group of people who have done something about it and are doing something about it. Till next time, my friends, be safe and be smart. Cheers. Ciao.